Bookending 2002 was the release of not one, but two different games that carried the title of One Piece Treasure Wars. January was the original, and December was its numbered sequel, One Piece Treasure Wars 2, Welcome to Buggyland. And as you might expect for a game and its follow-up released within the same calendar year, they aren't exactly radically different, which is why they get a shared video, and why I'll be using their footage interchangeably. Because a few UI tweaks and some extra characters aside, they are both One Piece themed party games about finding secret treasure on the board, which might be the first time the franchise has adapted in that way, but certainly not the last. Mario Party is the easiest surface level comparison to make, and it's not super off the mark. Each of the four party goers takes a turn rolling the dice to determine how many spaces they can move, and varying space types on the board will drive different outcomes. But instead of minigames being our divergence from the board and source of player agency, we get both of these things from a simple turn-based fighting system that activates when you're near an enemy on the board. Because this is a treasure war, not a treasure party, and all characters are equally equipped to commit violence on their peers in very motivated competition. Landing on a space on or adjacent to another character will prompt you with the opportunity to fight, with a pre-fight dice roll adding extra weight to your punches, and some simple rock-paper-scissors battle options behind the ebb and flow of the brawl. You can even instigate fights from a longer range with the right resources, and success will knock off some of your opponent's health. HP is not a stat I'm used to having in games like this, but it is central to both titles. Not only because it's the meter that separates you from a respawn penalty in Treasure Wars' version of Go to Jail, but also because it's a currency to be spent. Extra dice rolls, traversal abilities, and special attacks all drain from your health bar. Certain spaces can earn you or lose you some of that health, or they might manipulate some other marginal stat. You might walk into a restaurant that'll offer you some rejuvenating food, or you might find yourself on the explosive end of a buggy ball. Add that to a robust amount of consumable items, and you have a board game with deliberate choice and random chaos in equal quantities. But do you have a board game that can keep you from being bored? Because I think the one piece you Tureza Wozu kiss of death that it shares with so many other games of its type is how little time you spend hitting your buttons. Three opponents rolling their dice, no mini games to offset the inactivity, plus the fact that bonus enemies can barge into your game and start taking their own turns too, means that by the time I'd played a few rounds of this one, I had my phone at the ready for in between turns. And that is something I was prepared for because going into a 20-year-old party game without a party is the way I played, and the way I imagine the handful of other folks who play this title in 2022 will approach it too. Both due to the technical realities of such a feat, and perhaps the larger challenge of finding someone who would want to engage in a Japanese-only anime-based board video game from 2002. But I have to imagine that you're here for reasons scholarly more than you are looking for a party game recommendation and Treasure Wars certainly has aspects worth writing about. This is where the colored era pixel art for One Piece really starts hitting its stride, with cartoony characters moving around our board, with more manga-accurate work visible in reaction images and battles. It is a consistently quality presentation that makes great use of the brand, and these close-ups from the battle sequence are way more cinematic than they have any right to be. The boards themselves come to play too, and are themed after One Piece Islands. They will occasionally sport some sort of stage-specific gimmick, like rising tides obscuring different spaces, or bridges drawing. And when they don't, they still have buggy balls aplenty. Both of our treasure wars have stories as well, featuring our titular treasure to be warred over. Broadly speaking, both stories are the same. There are massive hordes of gold at stake, and everyone is competing in games to win that prize. Treasure Wars 1 has our straw hats stumbling across an island accidentally, after they lose their log pose in an incident with a bird. This cream mist island is ruled by a game original character, King Cello, and he and his minions put on these competitions for their own amusement. Treasure Wars 2 has Buggy welcoming the Straw Hats to Buggy Land with an invitation to participate in his games. Welcome to Buggy Land's story and tone is just a few notches funnier and probably better aligned to the gameplay too. Plus, you get to spend the entire game engaging with the One Piece cast and not the less interesting OCs in Game 1. Robin's also playable here because the plot goes up to Alabasta's end, therefore other Alabasta favorites like Bon Clay make an appearance too. This gives Welcome to Buggy Land more of a voice, and I think it's probably the superior of the two for that reason. It also literally has more of a voice because they add a squeaky character dialogue option 
that makes everyone sound like Animal Crossing characters, instead of their usual text-only silence. But window dressing aside, they are pretty firmly the same game at their core, and that core may have faded into obscurity with time, but it is totally serviceable. Two decades have come since the year flanked on either side by Treasure Wars, bringing with them a fading relevance of these Wonderswan party games. But with the right mindset, an appreciation for pixel art, some complementary material, and an emulator, the joint experience of these two games can be one to treasure. Probably not worth going to war over, though. <laughs>